American battery factory and first phosphate, we want to remain as localized to North America as we can. So because of that, they need to start off with securing the raw materials within North America. Talking battery grade phosphate here with first phosphate out of Canada. And John, congrats on signing the deal with the American battery factory. Yeah, thank you very much, Arnie. It was a, it was a lot of hard work. And I understand that the deal now is valid up to 2028 and it involves 40,000 tons of lithium iron phosphate. Is that per year or is that over the whole contract duration? Yeah, so at their first facility, which will be in Arizona, they're looking to ramp up to about a requirement for 40,000 tons of LFP cathode active material. And that should ramp up to 2028. And that's only the, the first of their facilities. So there, you know, there could be, you know, more. But for now, that's what we're working towards, you know, just a small attainable goal. And then, of course, the next question, commercial value. What is the commercial value of 40,000 tons of lithium iron phosphate right now? Yeah, so, I mean, you know, lithium iron phosphate cathode active material depends on numerous factors. As you know, raw materials have also been changing in price a lot. But in, And it also depends on, on the quality and, you know, where it's being made. But in general, I'll just give you a really large range. So we see it at anywhere from, you know, 12,000 USD per ton to about uh, $25,000 USD per ton. So 40,000 multiple multiplied by those two numbers would be somewhere between, you know, 500 million to a billion dollars USD worth of cathode active material, pretty much at today's prices. All right, really interesting. And a quick follow-up question on that one. This MOU, is that for an off-take agreement or is it more for a joint venture? What are we looking at here? Yeah, I think you could look at it more as a joint venture. American Battery Factory is going to be a, a gigafactory for making and basically localizing LFP battery products, large-scale and small-scale energy storage products inside of North America. So in order to do that, they need access to raw materials. You know, what we really like about American American battery factories. They made a, a full-scale commitment to America to starting their supply chain and ending their supply chain in America, not cheating anywhere in between. No piracy whatsoever. Like, you know, a lot of the other groups, they'll be very non-transparent about what they're trying to do. But American Battery Factory and First Phosphate, we want to remain as localized to North America as we can. So because of that, they need to start off with securing the raw materials within North America. And that's sort of the role of First Phosphate in this venture is to secure the source of phosphate, secure the, the source of iron, and hopefully also the source of lithium to be able to localize that LFP battery production inside of North America. And John, uh, you mentioned now the potential revenue from the 40,000 tons of lithium iron phosphate anywhere between 500 million and 1 billion. What kind of capex is provided in order to uh, move the project to the stage that you can actually deliver those 40,000 tons of product? Yeah, so you know what what uh, the MOU also states is that you know both the American Battery Factory and First Phosphate are in the process of, of searching for a technology partner to be able to make this possible. There are numerous technology partners out there around the world and in North America that you know are either producing LFP cam right now or have you know processes on which they're working to be able to do so. So we have to look at one of those partners and then based on that process, the, the CapEx numbers will flush out of that as well. And obviously, you know, it's complicated. It'll take more than just the two companies to be able to realize this. But I think it's, you know, what we're doing as American Battery Factory and First Phosphate is we're sort of securing the beginning of the supply chain, which is the raw materials, and the end of the supply chain, which is the finished products. And then, you know, in between is where the technology comes in the capital and the infrastructure to do it. And you also have a technology partner in Belgium, which is obviously outside of the North American jurisdiction. So is that also an option of bringing that partner in from Belgium? Yeah, certainly. I mean, Crayon Technologies is a partner on the purified phosphoric acid side. It's one of the largest producers of purified phosphoric acid in the world, in my opinion, the one with the best technology for doing so, at least for processing igneous rock. So yeah, we continue to work with Prayon in these goals of transforming our, our phosphate concentrate from our mines into, into purified phosphoric acid, which will then you know funnel into the process with American Battery Factory. And John, what is the importance of this localized supply chain in North America? Why is it so important that it's constantly being raised with first phosphate? Yeah, well, I, I think supply chains remain quite global still despite the fact that everybody's trying to de-risk them. So, you know, localizing a supply chain obviously de-risks it from the standpoint of when you're dealing with large ocean bodies to transport freight, there can be issues. When you're dealing with geopolitical situations, there can be issues, general things that can happen, black swan events such as, you know, COVID. So it's important to be able to have an eye on production uh, within North America. But that's also good because it makes a commitment to American families, American workers, gets a sense of pride going again in terms of local production. But above all, you know, it gives you that supply chain continuity and that just-in-time process that you need in order to be able to get caught down, maintain environmental standards, and also be able to produce at the scale that is going to be needed because a lot of this material is going to be needed, not just small amounts. So you really get to work on a, on a big supply chain plan. And of course, having less shipping also reduces your carbon footprint along the supply chain as shipping is one key source of uh, emissions in global trade. Now, Quebec is already doing a lot in terms of subsidies. What about the Biden inflation?
Legislation Act now with the American Battery Factory, is that also something that will now give you more access to different funding in addition to what you've already secured from the region of Quebec? Yeah, well, I, certainly I, the fact that First Phosphate and American Battery Factory are making a commitment to America bodes really well. I mean, I think if you, if you ask a lot of these other LFP sort of initiatives in North America the same question, they, they might have a hard time answering that. But our, our commitment here is to America, and I think that's an important one. Uh, talking about timelines here, John, what timelines do you have that you can already share with your audience? Yeah, well, I mean, in terms of with the American Battery Factory, right, we're looking at a timeline starting 2026 and going towards 2028. That's really for their first gigafactory in Arizona. And do you also see there the challenge that it's much quicker to have the battery factory side up and running versus then getting the raw materials and the processing also aligned along the supply chain? Well, I mean, it, it all has to come together at the same time or it doesn't. So yeah, you're, you're only as strong as your weakest link. So that, you know, there's, there's a lot of logistical considerations to be made. Because I mean, we all mentioned that it takes two to three years max to open up a battery factory in the EV, in the energy storage space versus eight to 10 to 12 years of getting a mine up and running. Yeah, I mean, look, if you if you look at the American Battery Factory plan and if you look at the, some other advancement uh, there in Arizona, I mean, they could speak to that themselves, but it seems like they've got a good plan. They've got a, a quick modular plan to build their factory. First phosphate in terms of what we're eyeing for product is 2028. Before 2028, we obviously have our partners at Preon to be able to bridge us. That's the timeline right now and we'll see how things develop. It's obviously determined on a lot of factors. Great talking to you, John, and congrats again on sealing the deal with the American Battery Factory.